Another classic example of application of Noether's theorem is in the case uh, of complex field uh, with a Lagrangian, which is global gauge invariant. A global gauge transformation is just applying uh, a constant phase everywhere to the field. These are also called U1 transformation which only involve a C number, which can also be seen as a one by one matrix. And that's uh, what the one stands for. And these uh, transformations are also unitary. That's what the U stands for. So this is a symmetry of the Klein-Gordon Lagrangian. But because the field is complex, um, the Lagrangian depends not only on phi, but also on phi star and their derivatives. Therefore, we need to specify how phi star also transform under global gauge transformation. And that's obviously the complex conjugate of this expression. So we see that we, if we use this uh, expression for the field in the Lagrangian, we get the same uh, expression as if lambda was equal to zero. So before the transformation, therefore, the Lagrangian uh, is unchanged under global gauge transformation. And that makes sense because uh, we usually don't want our physics to depend on, uh, on the phase. So let's now identify uh, the quantities which are relevant for the expression for the conserved Noether current associated with this symmetry. Um, so we first need to consider infinitesimal transformations. So that's when lambda is small. And because the Lagrangian is unchanged, we can take the function f mu to be equal to zero. We can now write uh, Noether's current for this symmetry. We have two terms because there is two dynamical variables, of the field phi and phi stars appearing in the Lagrangian. And because f mu is equal to zero, there is no additional term. So we can now calculate these two derivatives from uh, the expression of the Lagrangian. So that's the conserved current obeying. And the associated conserved charge is obtained by integrating over space the time-like component of the current. So we know that this thing is a constant over time. 